In hopes of, of getting to and beginning to truly answer Aaron's question, Aaron's question was, which was really, I think, the question of, of most of us, was, you know what, Doug, I'm, I, I'm confident that because of what I've done about Jesus, because of the conversation I know I've had with him that says, please, Jesus, come and save me, that I'm in this box, that I'm in this basket of life, but... There's something not right about my experience in that basket. There's something missing. I want more. I look at my life and I see, I see God must expect so much more of me. And frankly, I expect more. I expect that in this journey, which Jesus describes as one of adventure and joy and fulfillment and peace, that I need more of those joy and fulfillment and adventure and peace because it seems really, really hard. So even though I'm confident I'm in that box, help me understand how I can grow in that box. How can that experience be more of what God intended and what I deeply desire? And so I hope to go to that place today and hope to get us started in a discussion that leads to real answers for all of us. Because I know, as Aaron articulates that very question, I find myself raising my hand. Yeah, I know. I want to go there too. Because I, I desire more. But I want to talk a little bit more briefly about those baskets. You know, it just occurred to me yesterday. The, the conversation that we started last week, or because of the conversation that we started last week, I really feel like I owe you a lot. Because I've had more conversations with those of you in this congregation over the last week about last week's sermon, I think, of any I can recall recently. It's because I think that God has used the discussion that we had to really stir our souls. And I feel so committed to the idea of being very clear as we move through this thinking, to this place where we desire to be, help me to grow. And so, because of my commitment to be very clear and to really communicate truth effectively, I want to make sure that we all stay on the same page and talking, continuing to talk about these baskets. There's something about this basket of death that, that's important for us to know in addition to the characteristics which we pointed out last Sunday, and that's this. It's a scary thing. It's an awful thing. But there are many, many people who are in this box and who will end up in this box who suppose that they're not. Who really never thought they were in the box or the basket of death. They're in there and they're remaining in there, but they suppose or think for some reason that they're not. There are some terrifying cautions. There are some terrifying cautionary statements I want to share with you in the form of ifs, if this, to help us to understand the reality of what I've just said. If the only way those closest to you know you to be a Christian is because you say you are a Christian. And that's the only way the people truly closest to you really have any evidence to suggest that you are just because you say you are. I want to suggest to you, you need to think seriously about which basket you're in. If your journey with Christ consists primarily, if not even perhaps exclusively, of a two-hour stroll with him on Sunday mornings. And you really need to examine whether you're on a journey with Christ at all. If the primary words that your friends and family would use to honestly describe you include bitter, pessimistic, negative, short-tempered, self-absorbed, distant, arrogant, or mean-spirited, rather than loving, kind, peaceful, patient, or self-controlled. You may have a problem. You may need, and there may be cause for you, to seriously examine, am I really in relationship with Christ? If my primary characteristics are so un-Christ-like, Where am I? 
if you have not demonstrably grown as a person of godly character since the beginning of your Christian experience, I lovingly prompt you to thoughtfully examine whether you have ever made a sincere and wholehearted profession of faith in Jesus Christ. If, as you examine your life historically and think back upon moments of crisis in your life and also think back to moments of opportunity in life, okay? Moments where you've had great opportunities and a decision to make about some opportunity. So I want you to think both about the crisis and the opportunities. If your mechanism for responding to and making decisions in the midst of those moments of crisis and those moments of opportunity is pr primarily motivated by the wisdom of the world and your own flesh, as opposed to an honest attempt and desire to apply scriptural truth to those situations, then we have to examine, Jesus, am I really in you? Do I have a part in you? Now, there is a critical note that I need to share with you, and that's this. I am not trying, in fact, I'm desperately determined not to talk any of you out of this box, over into this box, right? But there are important questions. I'm really not trying to talk you out of this box and convince you, no, you're not saved. You're over, you must be over here. The truth and matter is that we all wish that those closest to us saw more of Christ in us. Right? We all wish that our journey with Christ was closer and more consistent. And that there was a lot more that's rich and meaningful and sustained and consistent about this journey than the time we spend here together on Sunday mornings. We all wish there was more. We all wrestle with character traits that we're not proud of. And we deeply desire to exemplify the attitudes accompanied by the fruits of the Spirit. We want more joy, peace, patience, kindness. And we want less of the crap that used to define us. And that still, for so many of us, perhaps for all of us, hangs around somehow. And continues to sneak up on us. We all wish that we had grown as Christians to the extent we know we could have since we first professed faith in Christ. Because of this, all of those cautionary ifs that I have mentioned make us all a little uneasy. Am I right? Or at least they should. All of those cautionary ifs make us all uneasy because none of us has arrived. None of us is at that place where we can, where we can remember the separation between the old me and the you me and the new me where I have just absolutely been transformed and perfected and made complete. No, we wrestle and we struggle and we will till the day we die. So to all of those of you, and I think this is most of us, who fit this description, I say, you're okay. You're, stay in the box. You're okay. We're going to talk about us in that box and that, that desire for more shortly. But even as I am determined not to scare one of you who are in this box of life into thinking that somehow you must not be and you're in this box of death, I am concerned more by far at the prospect that any one of you would leave here today thinking that you're in the box of life when in reality you have no part of Christ and you are at this moment living in the box that leads to death.